This is a video record of our cruise through the Inside Passage of Alaska on the Dawn Princess from August 5th to 15th, 2008. This is part one. In this part, we visit the Alaskan towns of Ketchikan and Juneau. To give you some orientation, the Alaskan Inside Passage consists of the waterways throughout the islands along the coast of Alaska. On most cruises, the Inside Passage means visiting the towns of Ketchikan, Juneau, and Skagway. I started planning this trip in the spring of 2008. I got a Princess brochure and found cruises to Alaska. I had wanted to cruise out of LA, but they didn't offer that at the time. They did offer a 10-day cruise out of San Francisco, so I picked that. Next, I wanted to book a cruise that would take place during one or both of our birthdays. Robin's birthday was on July 31st, and mine was on August 7th. The only cruise that would include either of those dates was the cruise that left on August 5th, so I booked that one. We have always arrived the day before the start of a trip, just in case there were any problems. Since it would be a quick flight to San Francisco, I decided to break with tradition and arrive on the day the trip started. To make things even easier, I prearranged to be met at the San Francisco airport by representatives of Princess Cruises who would take us and our luggage straight to the ship and then take us back to the airport after the cruise. That would result in the easiest and least stressful beginning of any trip we have ever taken. So it was that on the morning of August 5th, we boarded a plane and took the short flight to San Francisco. In the upcoming clip, we have landed and Robin is describing the events up to that moment. We just arrived in San Francisco. People are here to collect us from the ship, from the Dawn Princess. We have all of our luggage, except for one handle broke, and we'll remember that. <laughs> well, the flight was over like about an hour and a half over, probably late. Two hours late, I think. No, almost we really two hours. Late. Factor in all of the you know delays there in, in getting here. Yeah, we got to. Susan came early. We were all good. We got to the airport really fine. But once we got to the airport, there was like an hour delay. And we finally got on the plane, and then after that, there was another about half hour that yeah, we had to circle. go in circles. So now we're going to get down to the ship, and then you'll record again once we get the background of the ship. Within a few minutes, we were on the bus and headed to the ship. In no time at all, the ship came into view. We went through the check-in process, boarded the ship, and found our cabin. We just made it. It's just now exactly 1 o'clock on the button. So we got on the bus at exactly 12 o'clock and got here at, at right on the nose 1 o'clock. And here is San Francisco. The Bay Bridge. Downtown San Francisco is right there. The bathroom. Before we started our self guided tour of the ship, I took a few minutes to relax on our oversized balcony. A few minutes later, we left our cabin. A704, that is the back of the ship, that's the stern. And here is the front of the ship, way down there. Okay. Okay, well now we're on the ship. Woohoo, Dawn Princess. And um, we just had here. lunch? Huh? We just had lunch? Just Lunch. We got here about an hour ago. We're waiting to get our luggage so that I won't freeze to death because I'm so cold. Because I've got this skirt on and I'm wheezy. <laughs> Alright. Hey, handsome. Hi, 
Hi. Exploring the ship, it's so fun. Yeah. <laughs> At one point, we saw this small ship filled with prisoners, oops, I mean tourists, going out to see Alcatraz. We could also see the tower marking the location of the UC Berkeley campus. Then we toured the inside of the ship. A short time after the ship got underway, the Golden Gate Bridge came into view. That night, the captain introduced the ship's officers. Just after he finished, I got this picture with him. The next day, August 6th, we were well on our way to Alaska. This was going to be an at-sea day. By this time, we had our cabin in tip-top shape. Not a thing out of place. That first day was the least eventful day of the entire cruise. They offered a few demonstrations, all of which were something less than exciting. The first involved watching the chefs make food sculptures. Here are some of the results. Later, they had an ice carving demonstration. That was a little more exciting and interesting. Here I am trying to figure out how he knows what and where to cut. This is the final sculpture. 
a bear. The next day, August 7th, was another sea day. It was also my birthday. Okay, it is Thursday, August the 7th, 2008. This is the uh, about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. This is the second full day of our cruise, and there's a little bit of sunshine. Not a lot, but a little bit. There was even less to do on this day than the day before. It was very cold outside, so we could not use any of the pools. We did more exploring of the ship, and I read and watched movies on my iPad. That night, we ate at the Crown Grill to celebrate my birthday. The Crown Grill is the pay extra for a dining room where you can order fancier dinners. After dinner, they surprised me with this little birthday treat. It wasn't anything lavish, but it was still fun and good. That night, we went to see a Name That Tune competition in the main theater. I joined a group of about 15 other passengers on stage to play the game. Long story short, I won. I forget what I won, but it doesn't matter because winning gave me a great finish for my birthday. After sailing all night, we arrived at our first destination, Ketchikan, Alaska, on August 8th. It had been foggy all night and was still foggy as we approached the dock. And this is Ketchikan. No applause. Here's an Eskimo that wandered onto the ship. That would be me. After seeing Ketchikan from our balcony, we got dressed and went upstairs to the Horizon Court, the buffet area of the ship. After breakfast, we returned to our cabin, gathered up our coats and cameras, and got off the ship. This was the first time we had been able to get the full view of the Dawn Princess from the outside. We had only been able to find one excursion in Ketchikan that wasn't too expensive, yet held a promise to be picturesque if nothing else. The excursion would be at a place called the Salmon Falls Fishing Resort, which was about 15 miles north of Ketchikan. The excursion would include a boat ride up one of the ocean inlets and back. We had about an hour before we left for the falls, so we walked around Ketchikan. At the appointed time, we returned to the dock and found the bus that would take us to the falls. 
by the time we arrived, the sun was out and it was a beautiful day. Okay, this is Salmon Falls. And this is where we're going to take our excursion boat out somewhere. We were the first to board and thus were able to get a seat in the very front of the boat. The boat was roomier than it looked and, as we were soon to find out, it was very, very fast. When we reached the area they had wanted us to see, the boat proceeded slowly and occasionally stopped to allow for picture taking. After the boat ride, we were taken back to Ketchikan and had another opportunity to walk around the town. By mid-afternoon, it was time to walk back to the ship. Just after 3 o'clock, we pushed back from the pier and began leaving Ketchikan. We left Ketchikan just before this cruise ship did. It followed us for the rest of the afternoon and evening. It didn't take long for people to start swimming in the pools, despite the fact that it was getting very cold. After dinner that night, we went out on deck and got the following pictures as we sailed through one of the inner passages. The sun doesn't set in Alaska until about 11 o'clock. Yeah, it gets cold at night. After sailing all night, we were nearing our next destination, Juneau, on August 9th. One of the first things we saw before arriving was the tail fluke of a whale. As it turns out, that was a good omen because this was to be the best day of our entire cruise. Here we are in Juneau. It's Saturday morning, the 9th.
They're going to lend us one of these yachts, they were saying, so <laughs> we have to pick out one that uh, we think is going to satisfy all of our all of our needs. They even have Santa Claus waiting down there to greet us. He just got in from the North Pole. There he is. He's got a couple of his larger elves with him. Unlike the limited choices of excursions in Ketchikan, Juno offered a plethora of excursions. We ended up choosing two excursions, seeing the Mendenhall Glacier and going on a whale watching cruise. We went to see the glacier first. Oh, I decided to use Robin's still pictures of the glacier, but I added the audio from the video that I shot there to supplement her pictures. Okay, this is the Mendenhall Glacier. As we were leaving, we stopped in the information center and saw this sign. It shows the gradual but steady receding of the glacier over the years. The red line at the bottom of the picture shows the extent of the glacier in the year 1800. The blue line toward the top of the picture shows the current extent of the glacier. I am sure that by now the glacier has receded even more. While the trip to see the glacier was the primary reason we chose this excursion, the excursion also included a stop at the Macaulay Salmon Hatchery. This was less than a stellar sight, but it was included. Now we're at the fish hatchery after we saw the Mendenhall Glacier. And these are all salmon. Salmon. The fish ladder was the way they got the salmon into the river by having them jump over the hurdles. There was also an aquarium and a small museum in their visitor center. Among the exhibits in the museum was this Alaskan brown bear. And here were two visitors trying to interact with the bear. The excursion also took us to the Alaska State Museum. It was not something that I would have chosen to see, but again, it was included. After seeing the museum, we were driven back to the ship where we had lunch. We had just enough time to eat and then run out to catch the bus for our second excursion, whale watching. This was the highlight of our day and of our trip. It was cold and rainy when we arrived at the boat. We cruised out in the bay and didn't have to wait long to see our first whale. Within a few minutes, the captain told us that we were in the middle of a large pod of humpback whales. Then he told us that the pod had found a large school of fish and was going bubble net fishing. In this event, 
Whales dive deep below schools of fish and use bubbles blown from their blowholes to stun and trap the fish closer to the surface. Next, the whales surround the fish, following them to the surface by swimming in spiral patterns to keep the fish trapped. They feed by leaving their mouths open, swallowing everything in their paths before closing their mouths, pushing the water out through their batten plates and swallowing the fish. In the following clip, the captain placed the ship's hydrophone in the water and played the sounds over the PA system so we could all hear the whales talking to each other. After the whale watch, they drove us back to the ship. We freshened up, then we walked to downtown Juneau. We looked around at some of the shops and bought a few souvenirs. As we were walking around, we noticed that the following year, 2009, Alaska would celebrate 50 years since gaining statehood. As we were getting ready to return to the ship, we saw the Red Dog Saloon. It looked intriguing, so we went inside. Supposedly, this gun was checked and never claimed by Wyatt Earp. After seeing the town of Juneau, we walked back to the ship. Before we boarded, we took some pictures of the ship and the surrounding area. After a few minutes, I saw a sight that I shall never forget. The setting sun had just appeared from under the clouds, and I saw the most beautiful sunset I have ever seen in my life before or since. The following are the pictures I shot of that sunset. I let them prove my point. 